Let's be real, Superman and Lois isn't a tragedy. Response videos aren't really my thing, especially since this specific video wasn't directed at me. But since he didn't respond to my comment on his video, this is my only way of really getting his attention, which no hate to my man who created this well-made video, Film 1000. I was grinding. I'm not going to hate another man grinding, unless it's Jalen Green. But I wanted to pick at his points because he's spreading misinformation about Superman and Lois Season 4, creating his overall stance on a season that he hasn't seen yet, especially spreading this misinformation to a growing audience, which isn't helpful to anyone. Obviously, it wasn't really on purpose, because this info he was giving was true before, but it ain't true now. And first things first, all of the characters in Superman and Lois are coming back in some form in Season 4. True, not for all of the episodes in Season 4, but for like three episodes, which is a solid amount for the most part. Which, in his video, he made it seem like they weren't coming back at all, claiming that it would make Season 4 a shell of itself. And arguing that the side characters should be back for all of these episodes isn't really productive. One of the main issues with the show is the lack of focus on Superman and Lois. Which I love these side characters. Well, most of them. Especially love Steel. But they take away a good amount of time from the Kents. Who should be the main focus? Yes, these side characters build out the world of Smallville. But it leads to the stories to overstay their welcome. Plus, since there'll be less episodes, there'll be more focus on the Kents and Lex Luthor, which is a far more focused storyline that excites me. It reminds me of early season one, which was really focused through and through, and I'd argue that is Superman and Lois's peak. That's for another video. It also isn't true that the Kents are moving to Metropolis at all. There hasn't been any official reporting on that whatsoever, so I'm not going to believe that they're moving to Metropolis. And there's still Smallville sets up as they film for season four right now. And of course they'll be panning back to Metropolis because of Lex Luthor, because Lex motherfucking Luthor does not want to live in Smallville. But who knows, the guy looks like he's from Duck Dynasty. Also, this may be a personal thing. Having the potential to do something doesn't mean you should do it. It applies to everything in life. Like, I may want to stay with this girl the whole night to potentially try to get to know her and have a good time. But if the vibes ain't right, then I don't want to force anything, you know, and overstay my welcome. Same thing with Superman and Lois. Just because it has the potential to be seven and to 10 seasons long doesn't mean the show should, especially being on the CW. Sometimes the story should end when it already accomplished what it needed to do. And who knows if this was the end the showrunners envisioned. I don't know, I ain't a mind reader, but I could tell that the budget was already shrinking a bit in season three, especially with the lack of Superman action with these episodes in season three. So doing villains like Brainiac would be really hard to do, especially with the budgets already dwindling in season three. And God forbid if Superman and Lois season four is shit. I will still look at Superman and Lois as a triumph, not a tragedy. These iterations of Superman and Lois made me love these iconic characters. Bitsy Tug and Colin Hoechlin are my Lois Lane and Clark Kent. Bitsy's Lois is literally mother and Tyler Superman is daddy in more ways than one. For me, none of these other adaptations made me feel the same way that I feel for this Clark and Lois. Honestly, I never read any Superman comics or consumed that much Superman media. And from the stuff I've watched, like Cowboy Superman, it was okay. I never really watched Smallville because 10 seasons of TV on paper is really intimidating. And I haven't even watched the full nine seasons of The Office. That's the longest TV show I've ever watched. And I still haven't watched it all the way through. Anyways, this Tyrannia Lois was the iteration that made me love these characters more than I ever thought I would. It's insane. It's also really insane that I'd care for the twin boys, who at first were iffy at best. But now they are one of the strongest characters in the show. And I never thought I'd care for John Henry Aaron Sash Steel as much as I do. And thanks to the awesome writing and the performance by Wally Parks, I love this character a lot. And I never thought I'd care for another CW original character like Kyle Cushing. And at first he was a major dickhead, but now he's one of the more compelling characters on the show. It's even more insane that I love something from the CW Arrowverse. So yeah, even if Superman and Lois ends as a shell of itself, Superman and Lois will never be a tragedy to me, but a triumph because it made me insanely adore these iconic characters and always will be one of my favorite superhero shows of all time. And again, no hate to my guy Film1000 and to his video. I just wanted to share my own thoughts on his own thoughts on Serrano Lois. And at the end of the day, we're both passionate about the same show. And that's all that matters to me.